Hey, this is Presh Towalker. Mathematical competitions date back to ancient times. To quote an Indian poem, just as the sun outshines the stars, the math wizard eclipses others by solving mathematical problems in public. In modern times, the very first International Mathematical Olympiad was held in Romania in 1959 and had seven countries. The IMO has since expanded to over 100 countries across five continents. I'm sure its founders would be delighted that decades later, people around the world are searching YouTube just for Olympiad problems to give themselves a mathematical challenge. This question comes from the 1959 IMO and its problem number two. For what real values of x is the square root of the quantity x plus the square root of the quantity 2x minus 1 plus the square root of the quantity x minus the square root of the quantity 2x minus 1 all equal to a. Given different conditions, part a, a is equal to square root of 2, b, a is equal to 1, C, A is equal to 2, where only non-negative real numbers are admitted for square roots. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. I think this is a delightful problem, because while it is very challenging, a motivated student who works step by step would be able to work it out. So let's get started. Let's focus on the domain. Only non-negative real numbers are admitted for square roots. So we need everything under square roots to be non-negative numbers. Here we have the square root of 2x minus 1. We need that to be a non-negative number, so 0 is less than or equal to 2x minus 1, 1 is less than or equal to 2x, so x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Now let's look over here. We have x plus the square root of something. We know that the square root of that thing will be a non-negative number. We're adding x, which is greater than 1 half. So the entire thing is going to be a non-negative number. No problem. What about here? We have x minus the square root of 2x minus 1. So we're subtracting a non-negative number. So we need to make sure that x is greater than or equal to the square root of 2x minus 1. Now since x is greater than or equal to 1 half, the square root of 2x minus 1 will be greater than or equal to 0. So we'll safely square both sides of the equation. So x squared is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. That means x squared minus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now we can factor to a perfect square. We have the square of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. But this equation will always be true because the square of a real number will always be something that's greater than or equal to 0. So now we're set on these conditions. Furthermore, we have the square root of something plus the square root of something is equal to a. We know that each of these square roots is a non-negative number. We're adding two non-negative numbers, so we know that a is going to be a non-negative number. So a is greater than or equal to zero. So now that these conditions are set, let's analyze the equation. To eliminate the square roots, let's square both sides of the equation. So first we have the square of the first square root, that will eliminate this square root. Then we add the square of the next square root. That eliminates the next square root. And finally, we add two times the product of the square roots. This is equal to a squared. Now the square root of 2x minus 1 will cancel out with its opposite. Under this square root, we have a non-negative number. Under this square root, we have a non-negative number. So the square root of a non-negative number multiplied by the square root of a non-negative number is equal to the square root of the product of the two numbers. So this simplifies to be 2x plus 2 times the square root of the product of these binomials. This is all equal to a squared. Now furthermore, we have x plus some term multiplied by x minus the same term. So this will work out to be a difference of squares. This will be x squared minus the quantity 2x minus 1. We can simplify under the square root. Now x squared minus 2x plus 1 is exactly equal to the square of x minus 1. So we have the square root of the square of x minus 1 
this will work out to be the absolute value of x minus 1. We can then divide both sides of the equation by 2, giving x plus the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to a squared divided by 2. Now we have an equation with an absolute value term, so we will work this out in cases. In one case, let's suppose that x is greater than 1. Then the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1. So the equation becomes x plus x minus 1 is equal to a squared over 2. So 2x minus 1 is equal to a squared over 2, 2x is equal to a squared over 2 plus 1, and x is equal to a squared over 4 plus 1 half. This means that x is equal to a squared plus 2 all over 4. So we'll put this case to the side, and now we'll consider the other case that x is less than or equal to 1. This means the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 1 minus x. Substituting in, we have x plus 1 minus x is equal to a squared over 2. The x terms cancel out. 1 is equal to a squared over 2. 2 is equal to a squared. Now a is greater than or equal to 0, so that means a is equal to the positive square root of 2. So we worked out these cases. Furthermore, we know that x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So we can combine that with the first inequality. So we have x is less than or equal to 1, and it's greater than or equal to 1 half. In that case, a is equal to square root of 2. Now, if x is greater than 1, we know it's already greater than or equal to 1 half. So we don't need to add anything to this inequality. So now we will graph a as a function of x. So suppose that 1 half is less than or equal to x is less than 1. In that case, a is equal to square root of 2. So we can graph it like this, and we have a closed interval. Now what if instead x is greater than 1 half? So what would happen over here? x is equal to a squared plus 2 all over 4. So x is equal to a squared plus 2 over 4 will look something like a parabola. So let's get a sense of where the parabola starts and what it looks like. Now if x approaches 1 and we set that equal to a squared plus 2 all over 4, we solve that a is equal to square root of 2. So this is exactly this point, 1 comma square root of 2, where this line segment ends. Then, if we set x is equal to 3 over 2, we can set that equal to a squared plus 2 all over 4, and we would get that a is equal to 2. So we have this point over here, 3 halves comma 2. We now want a parabola that will be a curved segment between these two points, so it will look something like this. So now that we have this graph, we can solve the problem. So part a, a is equal to square root of 2. So we will mark the line a is equal to square root of 2, and we can see that there is a solution in x. So x will be the interval 1 half is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. That's the answer to part a. Part b, a is equal to 1. So here a is equal to 1. We see it doesn't intersect the graph of this function. There is no solution. There is no value of x for which this is true. Finally, a is equal to 2. So here we have a is equal to 2, and we see there's exactly one intersection. So we have x is equal to 3 over 2. So that's the answer to this question. What a wonderful and challenging problem from the first mathematical Olympiad. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.